Hello, my name is Professor Marcus Schleich. I'm the Dobney Chair in Clinical Research at the University of Western Australia and the Royal Perth Hospital in Perth, Australia. Well, resistant hypertension is defined as uncontrolled blood pressure despite taking three antihypertensive drugs at maximally tolerated doses, including a diuretic. And it's uh, reasonably common, around 10 to 12 percent of patients with hypertension have resistant hypertension. And the problem is that it is associated with a significantly increased cardiovascular risk. Uh, the reason and the rationale for this specific study was our belief that in a lot of patients, a very important pathophysiologic mechanism that plays a role in elevating blood pressure is not targeted therapeutically. And this is the endothelin pathway with its two receptors, the endothelin A and B receptor. And the rationale of this study was to see whether targeting the endothelin system with a dual endothelin antagonist, namely a prositentan, helps to improve blood pressure control in this cohort. So this was a randomized, controlled, blinded uh, phase three trial. And uh, the design was actually quite sophisticated. Uh, what is very important in the context of resistant hypertension is to ensure that these patients have true resistant hypertension. So we had a run-in phase, and then we swapped these patients to a standard background therapy consisting of what guidelines would recommend a single pill, triple combination of an angiotensin receptor blocker, a calcium channel blocker, and a diuretic. And only if patients maintain the blood pressure, a sitting blood pressure above 140 over 90 millimeters of mercury, they uh, made it into the trial and were then randomized initially in a double blind four week part during which they were either randomized to placebo to a prositentan, the dual endothelin antagonist, at 12.5, or the same dual end, uh, endothelin antagonist, 25 milligrams. And the primary endpoint was the change from baseline uh, after these four weeks of double blind treatment. We then wanted also to see whether or not a prositentan uh, is capable of reducing blood pressure in the long term. So this part one, the double blind phase, was followed by a 32-week single blind period where all patients were swapped to the higher dose of aprocitentan, 25 milligrams. And at the end of that phase, again, we checked blood pressure. And a clue of this study is really we had a withdrawal phase, a re-randomization where these patients either remained on the high dose of aprocitentan or were switched to placebo to look at uh, whether or not blood pressure changes with placebo and hopefully would be maintained with aprocitentan. And then, as usual, you would have a, a safety follow-up phase. So quite a sophisticated uh, design in this context. The primary endpoint was the change from baseline to week four in the double-blind um, four-week phase in mean trough sitting office systolic blood pressure. Key secondary endpoints uh, was the change from the withdrawal baseline, uh, which occurred at week 36 to week 40, again in uh, sitting office blood pressure. And as is really standard these days, uh, also changes in 24 ambulatory blood pressure monitoring. First off, uh, primary endpoint, uh, the change from baseline in the double blind four week phase, there was uh, around 15 millimeter of mercury blood pressure reduction from a baseline of around 153 millimeters of mercury measured by unattended um, uh, automated office blood pressures. And this was significantly more pronounced with both doses of aprocitentan compared to placebo. There was a placebo effect of around 11 millimeters of mercury, which is quite substantial, but again, uh, uh, a prositentan significantly more efficacious in terms of lowering blood pressure. During the single blind phase on the 25 milligrams, blood pressure was maintained at that level. So throughout that period, a prositentan at 25 milligrams worked perfectly in order to keep 
blood pressure at bay. And as expected, once patients were re-randomized after 36 weeks to either maintain 25 milligrams of aprocitan 10 or receiving placebo, there was a significant rise in the placebo group of 5.8 millimeters of mercury, highlighting again that the aprocitan 10 uh, continued to work and maintained excellent blood pressure control as opposed to placebo. The 24-hour blood pressure monitoring results were also quite important because we know that ambulatory blood pressure monitoring is more reliable and gives us a better indication across the 24 hours. And there was a very clear-cut distinction between placebo and both doses of aprocitentin. And interestingly, particularly nighttime blood pressure was reduced significantly by around 10 millimeters of mercury with the higher dose of aprocitentin. And that is relevant because we know that nighttime blood pressure is the best predictor of cardiovascular outcomes and reducing nighttime blood pressure very likely has significant benefits. I think it's a very exciting study in that it is proof of principle and shows the safety and the efficacy of a novel uh, pathophysiological approach to treat resistant hypertension, and that is by targeting the endothelin pathway with a dual uh, endothelin antagonist, aprocitentin. It worked uh, both at the moderate and the higher dose. We have seen, as expected, as a common side effect, um, uh, uh, fluid retention and peripheral edema. This was usually easily treated uh, with additional diuretic therapy. And it is important to uh, acknowledge that um, fluid retention can be seen in these patients and, and needs to be looked after. Uh, but we're very excited about the study and we feel that we have a new a uh, weapon in our armamentarium to combat and to treat resistant hypertension, which is a high risk condition. And uh, this may help many patients to reduce their cardiovascular risk. So obviously this was a phase three trial and um, uh, you know a, a decent size of the trial, a very sophisticated trial design. We also looked at a number of different subgroups and throughout it appeared that um, uh, this endothelin uh, antagonist works quite well. Uh, and there are signals that particularly in patients who are traditionally difficult to treat, those ones with proteinuria, those ones with a low renal function or a low EGFR, and the elderly seem to benefit specifically. So we believe that this is really a new opportunity for those very high-risk subjects, traditionally difficult to control, to have um, a, a new drug that will help to improve their blood pressure control. The key now will be to move forward to see how this performs, of course, after uh, regulatory um, uh, processes have been gone through and hopefully make this drug available for clinical use in the not too distant future uh, and then see in a real world how the drug actually performs. Mm -hmm.